people should not have to make a choice between uh, going digital right and staying regional and that's that's what at stake here right today if most of wikipedia is available in english how does a student in say some remote part of kerala who does not speak or converse in english so well access a document on battle of panipat right he wants to do a research on that and it's makes sense if that document is available in his regional language for india solving the language technology problem is a big issue right it, whether it is ngos working with the grassroots level or if it's government trying to reach the masses all of this requires language technology to overcome certain barriers so that's what we decided to focus on and we started off with this mission that we should have ai technology working for all the 22 uh, scheduled languages of india which cover more than 95% of the population and make sure that people have access to digital resources in their own language or digital services in their own language right can we at least build this bridge through translation through speech recognition and other technologies which make sure that this content becomes accessible to a different demographic who does not speak that language but in india context is very fine grained and let me take this example is one of my favorite examples if you think of pani puri right what the pani puri is varies from south india to north india west india to india right i mean what are the ingredients inside it and uh, uh, what you call it also right it's called by different names now if you ask an llm about it the answer depends upon who is asking right so and this has to be really taken care of and this will only happen if we have the right amount of data right collected from a diverse audience and then human preference is collected at scale that this is what i expect in the answer as opposed to some other answer that is given there is no open source blueprint available about how to go about collecting data at scale for such large number of languages right for right? so no one knows that if you want to collect data from 1 lakh speakers what's the right way of doing it given that we have walked on this path uh, what is important for us is to make sure that can we help other such efforts right say ai for x we have done ai for bharat but can we do ai for x in other multilingual regions of the world uh, we are collecting voice data from more than 500 districts in india and it's very uh, very inclusive data collection right so these participants come from different demographics different age groups different genders different education levels different occupations and so on right so we in our lab we are also doing work on speech synthesis where we are collecting data from professional voice artists we have a studio set up we have actually four mini studios set up in the lab and we have this large team of translators spread across the country almost 150 translators covering 22 indian languages who are manually translating sentences into their regional languages and these sentence pairs english and hindi english and santali english and manipuri would then be used to train these machine translation models and make them even better okay? uh the script provided to them has a lot of expressive content right so they can talk very cheerfully they can talk with uh sentences which have a lot of surprise or uh, uh fear and so on right so that it can the model can learn to be very expressive in its rendering and that's what makes chatbots uh, sort of successful right because if you have a chatbot who is talking to you in a very monotonic uh, manner then beyond a the point it becomes difficult to engage and we hope that another year we'll be able to put out expressive uh, speech synthesis systems for all the 22 uh, scheduled languages of india so this was around 2021 Uh, when we released the first set of open source models for 13 indian languages which were performing at par uh, or at comparable levels to models from to commercial offerings which were available at that time and today these models are deployed at multiple places uh, one of them being the supreme court of india where it is being used to translate uh, judgments into local languages right one of them being uh, upi where now someone can call and do a voice based payment code right? and this is very useful for people who are still not on smartphones right They're still using feature phones and they have bank accounts how do they transfer uh, these models are also being used in other government services like pm kisan to sort of automate some of the calls that come uh, through that uh, service we are very close now to sort of putting out working models for all the 22 languages for uh, the foundational technologies like machine translation speech recognition speech synthesis and ocr we have made this conscious choice of aggregating all the ai efforts across the institute in this one school and vadwani school of uh, ai right now right? for example if i work on language technology there are my colleagues in the school who also work on healthcare what are the intersections there it was healthcare again is about reaching the last 
a person on the ground. So what are some of the problems for them that I can solve, right? And what are some of the problems that I can discover from their domain, right? So being a part of a school which is focused on AI and cutting across disciplines is really beneficial for everyone because we could find interdisciplinary problems. Right? So these are all open research areas. A lot of work needs to be done. And I hope um, newer faculty as well as students joining the department take up some of these interesting problems and make progress on them.